God bless you guys. It's so lovely to be here. Praise, praise, praise God. Um, this is my first time like uh, preaching live since lockdown COVID. So it's really weird. It feels like, I don't know, I, you guys are real people. I'm so used to just like, you know, you're in bed, headscarf on quickly, trying to stay awake. You're going to get through worship, get to the words. Some of the words are a bit foggy and you come back at the end. But by God's grace, everyone stays awake today. Praise God. Um, just before we pray, I just want to shout out the Cornerstone Church. I was talking to your pastor who is loved up, right? Hmm. Enjoyment. Um, and so I was speaking to him during the week. He's a good friend. I love Pastor Quinle. He, you know, out here in these ministry streets, it's always good to have like just friends, like genuine friends. When you know, life has its ups and downs, its circles, and sometimes you need people just to say, not only bring scripture to you, but you know, PE, do, you, do they call you PE here? What do they call you? Yeah, yeah, PE. <laughs> Pastor Emmanuel is another good friend. It's always it's great that you have people that have good character, you know, because character matters. Like how we live matters, how we treat each other matters. It's all great that we can recite scripture, you know, but character. So I can attest to both Pastor Kunle and Pastor Emmanuel being great brothers and good friends to us. Shout, to, usually I say this every time where I go, but my husband's not usually here, but now I get to say, I get my premium chocolate husband, shout out. <laughs> premium chocolate. I say it all around, though, but now I see. And my beautiful children. Um, some people say my, my son looks like his father. Some say that the daughter looks like his father. All I know is God is a God of the turnaround. So <laughs> by the time they get, they're going to look like me. <laughs> We thank, God for, we thank God for that. And my dear, my family, my sister and my brothers. And just, you know, thanks for rolling with me today. Please be nice to them. Um, so, yeah, praise God. Can we just pray before I go into the word of God? Father, we just thank you. We just give you praise and glory and adoration. We thank you for this house. You know, it's very much fruit, Father. We just, we thank you for what you're doing in and through us, Lord God. We thank you for this family. We thank you for the Cornerstone Church. We thank you for this opportunity to go into your word, for you to speak to us, not for Toby to speak, but for you, the ancient of days, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, you know, the person, the being that was not created, but created everything that we see only simply for your pleasure. We, 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 we ask that we may hear from you today, Lord God, not my opinions, not my preconceived ideas, Lord God, just you, that you would speak, you know, straight to our hearts, that it would pierce any sort of break, any hearts of stone in here today. And it would go straight to our hearts of flesh, that we will not just take and hear the word, but we will do it. In fact, you know, it will, it will sharpen us, it will transform transform us so that we actually go into your likeness father god that we may be lights on hills that will people will see us see how we live see you lord god in us and through us and give glory to you in heaven we pray lord god in the name of jesus for everyone that's coming here with a heavy heart with a broken heart today you know and hidden it behind their beautiful smile we just pray lord god that you will speak to that heart lord god that the Holy Spirit will do that which the Holy Spirit can do, that I will not stand in the way, that anyone here will not stand in the way, that they will just have, you know, a moment with the King, a moment that I believe you have set before the beginning of time, that you may be glorified, not just in the Cornerstones Church, but around the world, as we look around and everyone is searching for you, that Lord God, that those that diligently seek, that they may find in the name of Jesus, be glorified always. Amen. 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 So you guys have been coming to church since, did, did, all through lockdown or? April, yeah, this is good. This is, this is, you know, no, it's good times, you know, because some people, you know, and this is no shade to the people online. You know, the past, the preachers always throw shade. There's not actually no shade because I tell you last week I was online, so it's no shade, but it's funny because 2020 threw so many different things on its head. Do you know what I mean? It caused us to really, the world, the world it caused the whole entire world to to reconsider you know whatever it is they thought to be true you know that it, it caused people to reconsider you know what love was and, and sadly the divorce rate was through the roof marriages got tested left right and center in lockdown um it caused people to consider what money is as well because actually when all the shops are closed 
Even even at one point, I, I think we did deliver room. Even that there was this diverting. No one was trying to to catch nothing. You know, um, it caused us to think what connection was. Do you, I don't know if anybody remembers the Instagram live craze. Every you just go onto Instagram, everyone was just live. <laughs> just live, just swipe across. You don't even know, if everyone's alive, I don't even know how everyone was in each other's lives. You know, you had the versus battles. I didn't know you guys are just Christian, you don't, you know, you don't do verses. Come on, be honest, it's a Sunday morning. Um, we had, you know, you had the versus battles. You had people just trying to think, actually, how do we connect? How do we connect now? Things that you took for granted ordinarily, waking up, going to church, I don't know, work, whatever it is that we do, studies, wherever it is, we took those things for granted. But all of a sudden now we weren't allowed to go anywhere, you know, and we were forced to think actually of our own thoughts and contend with our own being and contend with who we are and what we deemed success. Success was turned on its head, you know, other than Jeff Bezos, who seemed to have really done very well. And those that made ventilators, there were a lot of businesses that thought, okay, actually, how do I, what does success look like now? You know, what happens when things don't go how I, you know, thought they were gonna go? And I, I was not excluded from that. And a scripture that I wanna share today is actually a scripture that, I've definitely shared on before. I think I've shared on a few times, but in the last year and to where I am now, it's taken a new dimension. It's taken a new being because I've seen another point, another side of God. And it's allowed me to be like, oh, actually, what do I believe and who am I? You know, all the, the fancy churches, the great, you know, which, you know, I love them as much. I love the global church. I believe it's God idea. You know, without the global church, what do we have? Um, But I I feel like sometimes in the global church, we can just do business as usual, right? Someone can ask you at the end of service and say, how are you? We're just used to saying, fine. We got into the habits of just doing, right? And in the last year, I was forced even myself to say, well, actually, Toby, you preach, but what do you believe? Um, When you see the mortality rate as you do, even that became numb, like just figures but the, each one was a family each one was an empty seat at a table you know we'll never be at christmas again we'll never be you know uh, and never have another birthday it was it, it, it causes you to you know to think okay actually i know the songs i know i don't know about you but i grew up reciting the scriptures my mum, who you don't recite the scriptures you don't eat so you better learn how to recite them but actually now i was in that time where what i planned who had 2020 plans, who had, even now, 20, you went into 2021 plans. You had plans for what you were gonna be when you were 30. I know people turn 30, my sister turned 30, you know, in lockdown. Um, and all of it was turned on your head. And you, again, you ask yourself, you know, what do you believe? And do you fully trust God? Do you fully trust God? Not, this is not a matter of just, because if not, what are we doing? What are we doing out here? Like, if, if you don't personally have your personal conviction, your own personal trust with the saviour that we know to be true, everything's just sinking sand. We move, we see with culture that they are grappling. In fact, scripture already tells us, so it actually isn't new. It says that all creation earnestly waits for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. We see it in Romans 8, but actually we see it manifested all around us. We see everyone looking for some sort of answer, some sort of truth. In fact, now culture has changed it to my truth. So therefore Esther has a truth, Maxine has a truth, Odell has a truth, Mary, everybody has their own simple truth. And meanwhile, nobody is looking for the truth. There's no, there's, no, there's no truth, there's no absolutes. People are scared to say an absolute because when you have such a polarized society where you're either this or this, how dare you have an absolute? You might be canceled, you might be, everybody's fearing, please don't cancel me. So again, you are forced to go back to yourself and ask yourself, who are you? Do you really believe and do you trust this God you serve? My, you know, I'm gonna go into a period in scripture and I want to just look into it. It's just one scripture I have, but I want to go into it into, into detail. And my title of my message today is to trust God again. And many of us, I don't know about you, you've been walking with God. You've had moments in your life where you've trusted God, you know, trusted God for something. And it's, it's all good to trust anyone, you know, when it's all going good. But when things go awry, when things don't go correctly, when you've got your plans for 2020, when that's the year that you're gonna boss it, 
and all of a sudden everything's gone. It's it's the again, you know, the, the trust God comma again. That comma is a big comma because it's like, actually, how do I go again? You know, you know, you do, you do ever play that game as a child? My husband plays it with um my children. He's, you know, and where they fall back, you know, you fall back and it's fine. My son's not falling back onto me. He would never do it. It's just like, because I'm looking at you now, mum. I'm unsure as to whether, you know, but they do it like without a second thought to their, to, to their dad. But should ever, I can move. It's a, it's a big step to then go and fall back again. And, you know, I just want to set this scene as I go into scripture, because as I said, the, again, what happens is, and not only what happens with Satan, but just happens in life. Just the, just the darkness of life in this fallen world is that faith in God, that fight of faith, that, you know, that, that, that love, that fire, that burning, that desire that you have for God. Just slowly as you move through life and the circumstances of life, it can be slowly and gently. It's not even a big act sometimes. It's just gently and doubt begins to creep in so, so silently. You don't even know it's there. Until all of a sudden, it's, I ask you again this morning, not even for anyone else, but just for yourself, do you trust God again? Can we go to Luke, please, chapter five? Do you have readers? Anybody who want to read? No, if not, I can. There was mine. Anyone? No, okay. Luke, chapter five. Um, this is, you know, I, as I said, I love, I love, um, this scripture. I love it for many reasons, but I love it because actually it's quite a famous scripture and typically we hear it. I mean, you don't even have to be around the church that long to have heard Jesus saying to Simon Peter, you know, drop your nets and follow me. And he just followed. And I've always grappled with it because when I read scripture for me in my mind, I'm always thinking, how is it in life? And so I'm painting this scene in my life and I'm thinking, how does someone really, you know, and you hear pastors, that's faith. Do you have that sort of faith? You know, Jesus didn't have to ask him twice. Just drop and go. He didn't go home to talk to his wife. Didn't, you know, like, what happened? Like, what happened that he could just literally just walk? You know, and, and, so, and you hear people simplify it so well. But I think Luke chapter five and, and, and Luke does a really good job of painting a scene as what happened before he, he, just, he just left you know and and yeah he didn't consult his wife because let me tell you this trusting of God again you can't consult anyone but God and you doesn't matter who I don't know who you think the closest person is to you in your life this is when you are on your knees before the father and you're saying you're actually reaching desperately that God I need you but there's there's doubt that I want to move aside there's something in me that I don't fully believe you but you know, it, he said, "Was it help me out?" All the um, Odell, he's my, he's a scholar. I can, but I won't put him on the spot now. But yeah, he's a he's a pastor to be. He says, "You know, um, one of the disciples, I can't remember now. He's escaping me. It's you know, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief.' You know, and that's that's the trust in God again. Um, and that's so. This is this is just before. This is just before he does that infamous, you know, drop your nets, drop your, you know, drop you, put your things aside and follow me." I'm reading from the um, New King James Version. Um, and I have this, the Bible here. Okay, so it says, so it was, so as it was, there was a multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. And he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from there as they were washing their nets. Then he got up, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a, a little from the land. So as he sat down in, and so it's as he sat down and took the multitude from the boat. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners, thank God for the global church, amen. You can't just do church by yourself, single you. Just, 
you need partners, you need, this is family, you know, you need connection. You, you couldn't just, what he had was just more than enough. Don't let people tell you it can only be you. It's only you that can get the job. It's only you that can be the CEO. It's only, so that means you have to step, step on someone else's head to get, no, there's more than enough. Amen, can you say more than enough? More than enough. More than enough. I, the Bible, I, Jesus says in, in heaven, my father has many mansions. You know, there's more than enough. So he signaled to his partners and I just pray really in my heart that we will become a church and we will become a people and we will become Christians that we signal to one another. You know, what would the church of God, this is not I just feel led to say it. What would the church of God look like? What would the body of church look, look like? What would the world, how would the world look at us if we were signaling to one another? You know, not Jew, Jew and Gentile and black and white and Chinese all transformed into the, into, into the likeness of the father, now signaling to one another. This one's a banker. That one is a fashionista, I don't know. I don't know, that one is, is a surgeon. That one is an author, a doctor. We're just signaling to one another. All glorified for the father. But if we all just say, oh, this, is, this is my lane. You step in my lane, then it's not that even that you want to work with me, it's that you're an EOP. I want us to, you know, all that comes from is cynicism. You know, it comes from doubt because we don't want trust again. So we think, actually, I need to keep this because this is all I've got. You know, and I definitely, you know, if you look at a lot of our parents, you know, they don't say anything outside, don't say nothing to it, to it's, to it's done. It comes from fear, it comes from fear, it comes from disappointment, it comes from rejection, it comes from not having enough, it comes from not being able to trust a God, God again, that I've got to just keep this because there's no more abundance, it's a life in the pits of hell. Yeah, so he signaled to partners and he said, um, into the other boats, come and help me. And they came and filled their boats so much that he began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You know, many of us have been there too, where, where it's good or bad. Even when God does good, we don't believe we're deserving of good. And I suppose the ironic thing is, you know, our sinful nature, we're not actually deserving of good. But we thank God for the blood of Jesus. We thank God for the finished work of the cross. We thank God that the tomb is empty. We thank God that he and what he done on Calvary reconciles us to a loving father that makes us worthy. But yet, even though we have that, even though we know that truth, even though I'm saying it and you're hearing it, do you believe it? Are you trusting God again? Or are you still somewhere in your position this morning? Like, I'm not allowed to have this good. Just like Simon Peter. He's got more than enough. He's signaled to other people. They have more than enough. And his first words, it's not even thank you. His first words are not, I worship you. Oh Lord, I lift your name on high. It's move from me. Depart from me. You're good, I'm bad. And, 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 it, and in some respects, he wasn't lying because he was separate. He could see the gap, right? He could see that there was a gap, but he, what he couldn't see was that the person he was talking to was the bridge. And all he had to do was trust again. I don't know what the bridge is. I don't know what the gap is this morning. I don't know how large the chasm is. I don't know what you've come in today and you're not actually believing God for anymore. And I don't know how wide it is. And I don't know how long it's been there. You know, it could, it could be an area of your life that you're just not willing to surrender. I, you know, I have come this morning to tell you that Jesus is the bridge of all bridges and his hand is never too short and he is mighty to save and he is more than enough. He is a good father. He does want good for you. And, and you know, there, there, is no, there is no depth, there is no length, there is no breadth that he will not travel. He has not traveled. In fact, that's why they went to the tomb and it was empty, amen? He said, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. And verse nine says, for he and all that were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also, and so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, for now you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook, they forsook all that they had and followed him. The reason why this is, I mean, as I said, I've, I've, I've shared on it before and it will still be close to my heart, but I've, I, even as I stand here today, have seen new dimensions to it. Um, first of all, there's one thing to fail, fail just yourself. You know your secret fail, failures. You know, you know the ones that you don't want anyone to see. You know the things that you're struggling with. Even when you come, we all have them, by the way. It's not, no one's exempt. But there's another thing that here, you've got Simon Peter and he's failed publicly 
is that you know he's failed publicly the the, the, the opens the, the the chapter opens and it's just multitudes multitude i don't even know if we've seen multitudes it's such a biblical word isn't it multitudes it's, i don't know if today we have multitudes we have followers you know we've got subscribers we've got all of those sorts of things but here in the scripture we've got multitudes and it says that he was washed it, it says as there was multitude it said jesus was getting ready to preach to the multitudes this is that's what jesus did and they were in the corner of these these disciples washing their nets and i've always loved that because i think everyone at one point in their life gets to the point where they start to wash their nets they are done they're done they're not going to go back and catch anything anymore. They have tried to forgive. They have tried to get over that sinful habit. They have tried to, get to reconcile with their parents. They have tried to get over the trauma of their childhood. They have tried and tried and tried and failed time without number. And so now they're washing their nets. And not only are they washing their nets, they're doing it publicly. Publicly, you know, because of the nature of the world that we live in today, and certainly the Western culture for what we live in, we never appreciate just how many people are looking at us and how actually even our subconscious are aware of how many people are looking at us. And what that does to what we seem as successful, to them, they had had a terrible night. They hadn't said anything to Jesus. They hadn't said anything to Jesus. They, had just, they were just minding their business, washing their net. I don't know who's got their nets here today and washing them. I don't know who, who has even come to church. In fact, they washed the net. And now they're just going through the habits of church. There's dimensions to this where they've said, actually, yeah, it's fine. I will do this. I'll be a Christian. I'll do whatever. But as for that aspect of my heart, as, as to that aspect of, to my character, as to that aspect. And the moment anyone even goes into the arena of talking about it, bite. Because no, no, that's not for me. No, 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 I've dealt with that. No, 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 I've surrendered that, that's done, that's done. But actually you haven't really, you just haven't trusted God with that part again. I love God because he, as I said, this bridge, he realises it's little by little. So what does he do? He doesn't say to Simon Peter straight away, cast your net. No, he says, can I have your boat? That's, you know, that's like coming to church. They're washing their net. They have no intention of catching fish. You know, you see, you have heard pastors and preachers preach that he made himself available. He did make himself available, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a big ask because he was not going to, he's done. He's not doing, he's not fishing, he's not catching fish that day anymore. So he can go out and um, disgrace himself again in the midst of the multitudes. So when Jesus came to him and said, can I have you, you have your boat, let's go a little bit out so that he could sit down and preach. It wasn't a big ask. And many Christians have been living and dwelling with God in the little asks. You are okay to do what you're doing with your little asks of comfortability. Scripture of day, was it word for the day? Catching someone doing a little live, maybe you retweet a scripture. You know, just so people know that, you know, you're a Christian. You've done your witness. You've evangelized. People know that, you know, you're not doing the madness. The, the, the little ask, you know, someone tells you, oh, can you, I'm, I'm not even from around this, so I can't give you a reference, but someone asks you to drop him home, that's on your way. Oh, you're like, oh man, I, I mean, I, oh, go on then, I don't mind. This is, you would have passed there. It's not, it's, not, it's not out your way in the slightest. The little ask, God said to you, okay, cool. Yeah, man, no worries, I, you know, be in the worship team, you know, a couple songs, no problem. Give me your boat. Yeah, it's great. It's, you know, God's, God's gracious though, because even those little ones, you'll be surprised what he does with it. Amen. You know, as much as I mock, I don't, under, I don't undermine it. You, you'll be surprised what even he does with a little. And we've seen what he's done with fish and bread, right? We, you, we, we, we hear what he does with faith as small as a mustard seed, right? But I just say to you, and I challenge you this morning, out of love, that don't you dwell too long in your little asks. Because life will give you a big ask. And when life brings the mighty wind and you have been dwelling in your little asks, it's difficult to trust God again. Because the, the little that you've been asking him for, he's been providing. And so when he keeps asking him for a little bit and he's providing, you're, you, you, you're, you're, you're thrown for six when you ask him for the big and you realise he's the sovereign God. And I see a Christian and I see a culture and I see a people who, you know, it's so funny because you see a 9 a.m. prayer. I saw it and I was like, it's so funny, 9 a.m. You know, those days when I grew up, my mum and them, like, they used to do 6 a.m. 6 a.m. And that was even just a break. 
you know, I was, I was with my mother-in-law um, in lockdown. It's funny, we were at Asda and we were, she was doing a bit of shopping. And, we, you know, obviously when I'm not mad, I'm the one doing this sort of thing. But all of a sudden, my mother-in-law, she just went to the side, just by the side. And I thought, what's she doing? So I went to her after, I said, you right, mum? I said, oh, prayer started. I cannot say because I'm in Asda that I won't start my prayer. And she was on her prayer call doing her prayer. I was like, I couldn't wait till we get into the car. She said, so she wait. Because the cashier is, and I laugh, and I, mo- and I laugh at it, but I, I admire their diligence. I admire their diligence. I was saying to some friends recently, I said we got into mad traffic recently with my cousin. And you know that sort of non-moving traffic? Just, just, just turn off your engine, just forget it. You know, your plan's cancelled. And so we sat down, we were talking, and so there's a, first of all, there's a guy that got out, he went to the side to do a wee, and I thought, oh God, this is just disgusting. Obviously, I'm, I'm no judgment, and like, what can you do? You gotta go, you gotta go, but you know, no, I didn't see a hand sanitizer, I pray there's something in his bag. So to, to, and then straight after that, a Muslim guy got out, and he put down his, his uh, mat, and he started praying. And I was like, my cousin and I turned to each other, because we were like, oh my gosh, like, Wow, this is diligence like I haven't seen it. So what, is he, can he not just wait till we get... No, for him, it was time to pray. And, you know, and I said, you know, I, have, I, have, I can't respect that. Because we have dwelled so long in the Jesus saying, can you give me a boat? When we've washed our nets, we, we have no intention of even doing anything, you know, miraculous for trusting God for the big. So we have been dwelling in the going to church that if dare anyone ask us to be diligent with our, with our walk, how dare anyone ask us to really be disciplined and, and step out even a little bit further, it hurts. I'm not a gym person, I'm trying to be, pray for me. But I can only imagine that, you know, I said, I said I'm gonna buy some running shoes, you know, all the gear, no idea. You know, that's me usually, I get dressed up, take a few pictures and then all of a sudden, you know, it started to rain, oh, what can I do, you know? Um, but you know, as I start to do it, I said to, I said to Aki and I said to my husband, look, let's be honest, let me just run around the block for a bit because I only know what can happen if I start doing, say I'm gonna do marathon. So I said, I'll just run around the block, run around the block, you know, break a sweat and then I come back, you know? And he was just looking at me like, he's like when you're serious, let, come, come to me. And, and, and I say the same to us. I dwell on this point for as long as it, it, I can because I think sometimes we've lied to ourselves that the trusting of God just comes from a feeling Maybe the trusting of God, yeah, but the trusting of God again? That's lifestyle. That's the reading of the word. Faith comes by reading, it comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. It comes from diligence. I'm going to say another word, but people don't like to hear it. It comes through pain. It comes through pain and I believe it's in us. I believe today, for right now, we can say to God, God, I'm going to trust you again. But that comma again, it means actually maybe a 9 a.m. prayer. It means a 6 a.m. prayer. It means fasting. There's a lifestyle to which God has given us that if we do not occupy it, if we do not take it on, if we mix it with that of culture, then we will always just dwell in the little asks. He gave him his boat. I'm thinking conscious of time. Tell me how I'm doing for time, B or Lola Babes. You, you. Oh, it's right there. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, wow, woo. okay. Yeah. So, um, so you know, he, and he said to him, cast your net. Now you see, he's one thing for the boat, right? Now he's saying, cast your net. Net that I've, I've washed. Did you not see me washing the net? <laughs> I've washed it. You know, pray for healing. Believe God for healing. Mm, no, 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 I, I've, you know, I know what is, no, no. I, I know all the, re- the rhetoric around the church and healing. You know, ble- believe God for, for, for an emotional connection with the father. It's like, no, 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 he's a distant God. I've always known him to be a distant God. Put, cast down your net again. He whispered to God, I, in my mind, this is how I've, I've heard it. Because, you know, there's a multitude. This is all, this is not done secretly. This is not a private, you know, some people got, you know, the woman at the well in John chapter four, one of my other faves, he met her just one on one. No, this is, there's people around. He's just been he's preaching. All of a sudden, part of the sermon, he's just like, cast down your net. Imagine that, imagine if I was one of those, you know, those pastors, please lovely, you come here. What's your deepest, darkest fear? What is it that you are not trusting God for? Say it, say it on the mic. It, it, it's, it's those, it's those curve balls. It's like, oh no, 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 I just came to church for this. I didn't come to, I didn't actually come to church for healing. 
I didn't actually come to church to actually be connected to him. I didn't come to church for transformation. It's just Sunday morning. It's just what I do, the little ass. Now all of a sudden he's preaching in the boat. I mean, he's turning to him and saying, the net that I've washed, that I'm done with, that I've just, I've failed too long. You're putting me, telling me to put that in again? And, and, and he whispered as I, as, I, as I sort of really, he's like, I've toiled all night and I've caught nothing. I, I always choke up because I'm like, how long was your night? How long is someone's night? I, I, don't, I don't know how long someone's night is. And I don't know how long it is to toil all night and catch nothing. You know, I know with my community and, you know, and how we study the word and how we've, we, you know, we live, to, you know, we don't physically live together, but we, we share deeply against the word of God. And I have deep friends that are, at this point, let's be honest, they really are family. And you've seen them, you know, you've prayed with them, you've prayed with them. And yet to toil all night and catch nothing, I think sometimes we don't really understand. We judge that, oh, they, they're acting out, they're acting this way. No, they, they, there's deep pain there's deep disappointment they've hoped against hope and yet they're still hoping and what does the bible say hope deferred makes the heart sick there's a lot of people that i see walking around they've never seen in their eyes the goodness of god that again is a far chasm the trust in god again is a big reach i you know i share and i you know these guys will know you know i lost my cousin to covid um in um, the 28th of December 2020 just as the year went out and uh, we got a call a couple of days before and he um, family was like cousin's not doing great put him on a ventilator and we need to pray and so my cousins and my sisters and you know my husband we, we just pr- I mean I'm a praying person but I, I, I don't think I prayed like that ever in my life desperate prayer you are on your knees invading the heavens just sometimes there's no words it's just literal screams please and you know with each with each I don't know would it have been every three hours we get a call you know no one's allowed loud in the hospitals those times and so they you know they, they would say you know he's his oxygen saturation is you know going down it's going down and we're just like absolutely not we are not having this you know and the end of the story here is that they catch a multitude of fish. They're sharing their partners. But the end of that story was he, he died. They, they, they called us back. We prayed at nine. It was another nine o'clock and everyone was tired. We prayed straight for days. And then when you do sleep, you don't sleep anyway because you're thinking, what on earth? Just exhausted, pressed, just crying, God, please, please and please do not take this one. You're an almighty God. All the Psalms, the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. You know, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The words, for, um, the world for, um, shows his handiwork. You know, praying, God, please. Then your cousin calls and said he's gone. Toiled all night and caught nothing. Nothing. That's how it felt. I said, wow, woo. So you this kind of sovereign God. I've never known this because I've prayed for people before. And, you know, they say there's a miraculous turnaround. And you go back and you give your testimony on a Sunday. You know, and you're like, yeah, goosey, what a mighty God we serve. This is what I'm used to. That's the culture of the church. I mean, little asks, you know, I pray for an exam when I was little, GCSEs. God, please, and my studying was being a bit, <laughs> but if you could dot my I's and cross my T's, you come out and you got A, you're like, I'll take it. You know, we're used to this. But when you go and you start, actually, he's gone. You're standing at each stage at this 42 years old. You're like, what's happening? Fast forward a couple of weeks, someone else in our community, their mother-in-law, same situation, called me up crying. Toby, please pray. Her oxygen saturation, all these triggering words that you heard a couple of weeks earlier. Do I trust God again? Do I pray like he can? Do I trust him even if he doesn't? It was one of the hard, it was harder than my cousin's prayer because I had to pray believing that God is still good. I had to pray and she was looking at me like, and I was just stunned for words. I am very rarely lost for words, 
but I was. The words couldn't come out. I couldn't say, God, please, because I was scared to ask him again for the fear that he doesn't do it again. Because we in this church culture have, we have put God up to actually he's a magician. And so he does what we ask. And we've never positioned ourselves to the big ask to say, actually, God, you do your will through me. I don't come with my requests. You are the almighty God. We say you are the almighty God to say, come, give me the big house. We don't say, oh, you're the almighty God that actually my world is yours. I prayed again and she went. She, 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 um, she, she died. Called me back in an hour. She's gone, Toby. Do you know from there to here as I stand and talk to you, the chasm is big. <laughs> the bridge is big. You know, people like, I, it's people always, um, with me, they, I wonder, it's because I preach, isn't it? So, like, oh, Toby's all right. But we know by yourself, I know me by myself. I, you know you by yourself. You know how big that is. You know your thoughts. You know what goes on in your head. You know how big it is. Now, I tell you again, put down, you know, in fact, I don't know, what am I going to say? Let me say it just like Simon Peter. He said, at your will. He said, I have toiled all night and caught nothing. I prayed for that man. I prayed for him. I loved him. He was my eldest cousin. I always known him. Not another birthday. Gone. I don't know what yours is. That's a deep pain for me. Still is. I don't know, but, but I, 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 I choose, and this is what people don't understand, the choice that comes back with the faith, that the, the fasting and the prayer and the positioning, come what may, traffic or not, go slow or not, I will pray, Asda or not, I will pray, I will position, I will make my face like a flint and I will serve the almighty God, come what may, decision. Then that's how you can turn and say, I've caught nothing, there's an acknowledgement. You know, sometimes you talk to Christians and there's not an acknowledgement. I will never lie to you today, it hurts. There's a disappointment, a big, deep disappointment. I don't know, I speak to people, they're 45, like, this is not what I thought my life was going to be, they're 65, this is not why. I don't know what you're dealing with today, I'm not going to tell you to pretend that it doesn't exist, Simon Peter didn't, he said, you know, I, um, he said, I have told all night and caught nothing, but he said, but at your word, and this is what I say to you today, this is what I say to you today, he said, but nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net, I will trust again. I will believe God again. I, not just belief in terms of emotion, not just belief in terms of a feeling. No, you're going to position your whole life, your whole body, your whole, your, your opinions no longer mess, matter because it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. You know, there's so many parts of people ask, what do you think? I don't think. <coughs> There'll be such, be such, what's your opinion on? I don't know, to be honest. Let me go to the script. I have biblical opinion. I was talking to your pastor. You're talking about, you're talking about politics. I said, well, my, my, my political persuasion right now is, is, is the Bible. <laughs> that's, that, you know, that's what it is. It's, it's, uh, uh, does that mean I'm not intelligent? Absolutely not. I, 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 I love the, 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 um, the thought of intellect. I love it. Do I want to elevate that above God? It doesn't help me on those days where I catch nothing. It doesn't help me on those days where those years, those months, those decades sometimes where I kept catching nothing. And so when he let down his and he made physical fish, he realized not that, oh my God, this is successful. My business is successful. I'm sure this is preached. Come on, partners, trades. This wasn't about money. This wasn't about fish. It was never about fish. It doesn't nothing to do with fish. If it was about fish and money, Simon Peter would have said, oh, glory be to God. You know, come and see. You know, that's what it would have been. No, he said, get away from me. Why? Because he's like, hold on, you have come to reconcile me to you. You have come that I may have life and life more abundantly. Actually, I've seen myself. And actually, as Paul said, the things I don't want to do are the things I end up doing. But the things I do, are, you know, or is it the reverse? But you understand, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a messed up person. No one wants to say, you see people say, I, I, I can tell you that. I'm confused. People say, oh, how does your marriage work? I made a, make a decision, good, good and bad, on the good days. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so he said, and now then, Jesus said, you'll catch men. 
First, he had a decision himself. First, he saw himself. First, he caught nothing himself. First, he realized, actually, by myself, I am not good. I tell people there's no goodness outside of God. We don't know goodness outside of God. Even the best of your days are are tiny replicas to what God has planned for you. And then he said, I'll catch, we'll go and we'll catch men. I've run out of time, so I'll, I'll close with this and I'll just say, look, who needs to trust God again? I've got a few questions and I just pray that you open your heart before the Father and you answer them yourself. Not for me. It's not rhetorical though. It requires an answer. But the answer should be to the one that is asking you today. Who needs to trust God again? Again, who needs to really, who needs to move from the little asks to the big? Who's been dwelling in the comfortable Christianity and I'll just get by asks for far too long because when you look over there, all you see is the fact that you've caught nothing. Trust God with your nothing. Trust God with that constant pain. Trust God with that disappointment. Knowing that actually, you, what's so interesting is the things that we are thinking about in terms of his business, in terms of the physical, all taken care of, if only had more than enough, the, the boat was sinking. He just used it as an illustration to say, do you see these material things that are weighing down your heart? Some people here today, these material things that you've, you've weighed down, that's nothing for God. That's nothing. It isn't anything. You, you can, you, yeah, fine, put down your net again. What about that trauma that keeps going over and over and over again that's now affecting your personality, now affecting how you see people, now affecting how you trust others? How are you going to deal with that? there's a new level I believe without a shadow of a doubt I bang on about it more than people would probably want to listen that God is going to do something in and through us people family saints my brothers and sisters in Christ for such a time as this for such a time as this Esther went to the to the to the um, palace they were going to kill all of her people her uncle went to her Mordecai and said listen could you talk to the king she said if I talk to the king he'll kill me he said well listen if you keep quiet i.e if you stay in your little asks fair enough you will but God will rise up another time but consider this consider that you've been here consider that you've been placed here consider that you came here today for such a time as this to say actually I'm going to trust God again and actually with my life God is going to do the miraculous and as I as and as I as I as I think oh my gosh on those days I said to God I saw a new side of you now I know he's the sovereign God (laughs) he gives and he takes away He gives and he takes away. And I did not like the decision. I talked to people and I said, but how, how? I start to to see people, you say, you see, and I kept going back to God, but how? I I found myself a little bit like Job. Like, you know, when he asked, like, I love that man. I love that girl. She's continuously suffering, Lord. What's going on? We've prayed. God said, were you there? That's what he said to Job. When I created the stars, were you there when I put the you know the firework and in into place the fireman into place were you there he is the sovereign god and i now even have another glimpse and you know what so you know as i say you know the madness of it not even tiny to, to what i know god to be there's so much more that I will see. But what I did know was, listen, and you know, my, my brother said it just after, when we were on that call and they said, he's gone. We continued to pray. And my brother said something that was so very profound. He said, Brother Tony may be gone, but do not let Satan take your faith. And it would have been far greater a loss if I didn't trust God again. So the next time someone comes to me to pray for sickness, I am going to pray all the more, believing that God can and will the next time someone comes to me with something that I think may be just too big for my God. No, I'm going to cancel that fee, fear. I'm going to trust God again. Will, are you, are, will you? That part that you kept behind your back, will you surrender that? That mistake, that fear, that condemnation, that shame. That's what, that's exactly, just like Adam. Didn't Peter sound like Adam? Peter, Adam, I've hid myself, Lord. What did, what, what did, what did Simon Peter say? no 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 go for me I'm a sinful man that shame sometimes the greatest thing in between you and God is shame 
Sometimes the greatest thing in between God is not even that you've caught nothing, is that you think you're nothing. Is that you think you're nothing. That sometimes that's your greatest chasm. Surrender it all and trust God again in the name of Jesus. Can I just pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Awesome God. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment to fellowship together. I just pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, for you know, you were there at the beginning. You spoke them into being, you know their purpose, you know where they're going. You know what they're hiding, you know what's heavy. You know the burdens that are heavy in here this morning. You know the things that the, that the words are getting stuck in their throat. They want to ask you for something, but they're scared to ask because they've caught nothing. May they surrender it all today. May they surrender it all. May they be reminded again that they can approach the throne of grace and obtain mercy. May they be reminded that if anyone must come to you, that they must first believe that you are and you're a rewarder. You reward, you're a good God to those that diligently seek you. May they know that, look, church and Christianity is not something we do. It is who we are. It is in you that we are and have our being. Outside of you, we are nothing. Everything we are is in you. May they know that that is it. The beginning and the end of our lives reside, exist, consist of who you are. Fill us, Lord. Fill us again. Push us, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Push us to trust again in the name of Jesus. Stretch us beyond our comfort zones to the place where we can be, yes, Lord God, not just little boats that we've even cast aside anyway. For those things that we have deemed valuable, where we know that all value resides in you. I give you praise because I know you to be good. I give you praise because I know I stand with David. I said, I've been young and even as I get older, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his children begging for bread. I know you to be faithful. I know you to be, I know that you are where we can trust again. So Holy Spirit, do that which I will never be able to do and convict the hearts that they know so you will be glorified in and through us individually, but no, also as partners, partners as a global church sit on a hill that people may see it and know that you are real that everyone that's searching looking to and fro that may be able to see our lives and you through us and know that we have we have a living God I thank you for the cross nothing anything none of this would be possible without Calvary so I thank you for the finished work of the cross I thank you for the empty tomb I thank you Lord God that you are alive and you're coming back again I thank you Lord God for the name of Jesus Lord God that even as we lift you up this morning I believe in the name of Jesus that you will draw all men in Jesus name Amen